With spring in full swing and summer knocking at our door, do you look around your house and just want for things to be cleaner and more organized like I do? Then come with me and let me show you what I do to make things better with my productive Sunday reset routine. Between Purim, Passover, and now Shavuot, which concluded with Shabbat yesterday, I did not feel I had enough time to take a breather and do my regular Sunday reset routine because I wanted to focus on the moments spent with my family and friends during these Jewish holidays. Therefore, during all that period of time, there was no Jewish home refresh, hence our house being a complete mess. So today, I'm excited to bring you along to do this much needed spring Sunday refresh routine to put me back on track for the upcoming week. And whether you are watching or putting me in the background while you are doing your own weekly reset routine, I hope we can motivate each other to do what needs to be done. Let me put on a pretty tickle and let's jump into it. My morning routine always starts the same way. As soon as I wake up, I say Moda Ani and I go in the kitchen and wash my hands ritualistically three times on each side. Once I am done washing my hands ritualistically, I will use the bathroom, then wash my hands thoroughly with soap and water. Oh, this could be the best thing that I'll ever know. Mm. I will then floss, then brush my teeth. I wash my face with my favorite soap, Ceravi. I rinse my face. Pat it dry and I apply my serums. Then I will dress and finally I will pray after washing my hands ritualistically with a special blessing. I find that when I start my day with my devotions, I am more grounded and my day feels more peaceful. Before I start any project, I include a personal prayer. Today, I pray for God to help whoever is watching and myself to be able to accomplish what we need to do to be able to feel better because for me, chaos in my house means chaos in my mind as well. Are you also affected mentally by how your surroundings are? If it is tidy, you feel better and if it is a mess, you feel uneasy? I would love to know how your surroundings affect you. Once the spiritual side of my weekly reset routine is taken care of, I do a short to-do list. I have been loving this new planner that is so pretty and useful with its daily focus, top three priorities, a short to-do list so I do not get overwhelmed, a time block schedule for the day, It also helps me monitor my water and food intake of the day, but of what I like the most about this planner are these two new categories for me to reflect on my day, which I absolutely love, and I will leave the link for this daily planner in my description box below. Before I start my routine while the kiddos are still asleep, I want to start my day with an act of kindness so I feed our lovely wild birds that have given us so much pleasure throughout the years with their beautiful colors and songs. So I make sure I feed them first. Once the birds are fed, it is time to start the physical part of my productive reset routine. 
My first stop in my physical Sunday reset routine is taking care of my body because not only does it help me physically, but it helps me mentally as well to face all the stress and daily challenges in my life. As I shared with you in my CME or continuous medical education video, I have taken upon myself to return to a more healthy and active lifestyle that includes for me at least 30 minutes of daily activity, like following this exercise video on YouTube from Sydney Cummings. After moving my body, I feel already so much better, ready to attack the day. So after a good shower, And dressing up, I'm ready to embark on the phase two of this amazing productive Sunday reset routine. And because we are in the bedroom, we're gonna start by making our beds with the help of our two daughters, Leah and Naomi. Naomi will take care of my bed. And Leah took care of daddy's bed. I think that both of them are doing a fantastic job. And if you think so too, let them know in the comments below. Once the beds are made, I'm going to fold a load of laundry. To be honest, in the past, I used to hate folding laundry, but now I find it very peaceful and relaxing. Usually I will listen to a good podcast or YouTube video while I'm folding. And on a side note, if you are wondering why I didn't change the linens, it's because before any holiday or Shabbat, we are going to change the linen. Therefore, they were freshly changed just a few days ago. Many of you asked me if my husband participates to the chores of our Jewish home, and the answer is absolutely yes. For example, while I was folding the towels, he was folding his basket of laundry. He is also our formal sanitary director in our house and official shopper for Shabbat. I really could not do everything on my own and this is why I appreciate his help so much. Once the towels are folded, I will put them away in our linen closet. While I'm walking away from the room, I take one last look as this room is done and we have a few more to go. But for the other bedrooms, they will be cleaned by our children themselves as we try to promote autonomy and a sense of accomplishment in our children. Next stop, the bathroom. I start with the main bathroom because it has seen a lot of traffic in the last few weeks and it is in desperate need of undivided attention and TLC, especially the shower curtain, the anti-slip mat, as well as the shower head that is full of calcium buildup. I flip the bath mat with the suction cup facing up. Then I will put this super cute bathtub stopper and I will add some cold water. I use bleach to take care of the stains. I use about a cup in a small amount of cold water. I take down the shower curtain and add it with the bath mat in the tub. Generally, I do not like to use bleach as a cleaner, but I'm yet to find another more eco-friendly alternative that will be able to eliminate the stains on the bath mat, the curtain, as well as to clean the bottom of our bathtub all at the same time. But if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to know what you use. While the curtain and mat are soaking, I take my shower head and I will try to remove the calcium buildup on it using the oldest trick in the book, which is adding vinegar to a plastic bag, put the shower head in it and let it soak at the same time as the mat and curtain are soaking in the bleach. While I tie up the bag and try not to make a mess, let me introduce myself for those who are new to my channel. Hi, my name is Sarah Malka, and for those who have been here for a while, thank you so much for being here. It's so nice to be with you again. On my channel, I share with you all facets of my Orthodox Sephardic Jewish life, 
As a full-time working mom with small kiddos, you will also be invited to partake in all of our Life Cycles events as Orthodox Jews, including our daily reality and the mess like today in our Orthodox Jewish house. I hope you will leave this video a big thumbs up and I hope also that you will consider subscribing to our channel. Once everything is soaking, I will put a load of laundry with the cloth curtain and fabric mat and I will use my favorite laundry soap, which is Percy. And I have to apologize to you because in my last Sunday reset routine, I said that Percy was a French brand because I was raised in France and we always used to have Persil as our laundry detergent and Percy means parsley in French. I always thought it was a French brand, but you, my lovely viewers, made sure that I knew the truth that in fact, Percy is a German brand, so I stand corrected and thank you for letting me know. Next step is the living room and dining room. The living room will be cleaned by our daughters as they are the one who read the Circle magazine, which is an Orthodox Jewish magazine catered to our children with wholesome stories related to the Torah, fun stories, games, and it also includes news events from around the world. The children will also clean up all the books they read on Shabbat and the holidays because as Orthodox Jews, we do not turn on or off electronic device during Shabbat and the holidays, so their main source of entertainment entertainments are books, board games, and toys, and this is why we have so many, thank God. And if you want to learn more about what kind of books we read as Orthodox Jews, I did a tour of an Orthodox Jewish bookstore, and I will leave the link in the description box below and the link above. While the girls are cleaning the living room, I will clean the dining room table with one of my favorite cleaner, which is the Method All-Purpose Lavender Cleaner. Usually I prefer the anti-back method cleaner, but here where I live, it is back ordered, so we have to do what we have to do and use the second best. But I'm curious to know, is the method anti-back cleaner back ordered also where you live? Please let me know in the comments below. I put my weekday tablecloth on top of my clean Shabbat table as it is one of my little hacks to save time because this way when Shabbat comes, I simply remove the weekday tablecloth and the Shabbat table is ready to be set. I put the chairs on top of the table and I start our humba and this little automatic vacuum is definitely part of my top 10 most useful cleaning tools in my house and it allows me to live by one of my favorite motto, work smarter, not harder. While Roomba is doing its magic, I will remove the glass cups from our Shabbat and holiday candle holders and here is a super hack we use to hold any glass cups or candles on any and every candle holder. That is to use Silly Putty from the dollar store and that Silly Putty works like magic. Once I have emptied the glass cups, I will bring them in the kitchen and place them in the dishwasher. While I do this, Leah will bring back the candlestick holders and the platter in the cabinet. As we are halfway through our productive reset routine, I will treat myself to a nice coffee. I think to be productive and to stay motivated, it is important to reward oneself. Are you also that kind of person who will treat yourself to motivate yourself? Let me know in the comments below what is your favorite treat and I cannot wait to read your answers. Between two sips of iced coffee, I will take the opportunity to change the name of the parasha or portion of the Torah that is read weekly starting on Shabbat on our letterboard. This week's parasha is Nassau and the time of the candle lighting will change as well because the sunset dictates when we start Shabbat and the holidays and the stars will dictate when we end. Hence, the time of lighting and the end of Shabbat will change every week. Once the litter board is updated, I will start the kitchen, but first I will put our load of laundry in the dryer. I start the kitchen by doing the milk dishes by hand as we only have a meat dishwasher as I have already showed you in our Sephardic Orthodox Kosher Kitchen Tour and I have to say that doing the dishes while looking outside and peeking if the birds are enjoying their food, it is such a beautiful moment that I'm so grateful for. If you have been here for a while, maybe you're asking yourself, Sarah Malka, why are you not using your beloved color-coded scrub daddy sponges? 
Well, it is because they are not delivered here anymore where I live in Canada. So please let me know how I can have them shipped to Canada for a reasonable price because I really miss my smiley sponges. They really made me so happy when I use them to clean. After rinsing, drying, and putting back all the milk dishes, I will put back all the hand-washed items from the meat side, as most of the glassware with gold edging do not go in the dishwasher. I also put back the serving plates, including our favorite Daphina serving plate we use on Shabbat. This plate is so precious to us because it was a present for our 15th wedding anniversary, thank God. I also put away the last gold trim glasses. And talking about gold trimmings, when I went back to the Jewish kitchenware store to get the wine decanter or carafe I showed you in our Jewish kitchenware store tour, unfortunately, there was none left. But God willing, I stay confident that we will find a more special one next time. I unload the dishwasher I had turned on after Shabbat as it is part of my after Shabbat routine and I will put everything away and add a second load of dishes including the pots and pans as well as our Shabbat light. After a quick cleanup of the table and counters and a more in-depth cleaning of the meat and sinks using different cloth, blue for milk and red for meat, I will clean the appliances using the pink stuff which is my favorite cleaner for stainless steel appliances. While I'm cleaning away, my husband takes out the recycling. Then we're gonna bring Roomba in the kitchen and let it do its job. Already the kitchen looks so much better, thank God. Once I'm done with the kitchen, I go to complete the work in the bathrooms and look at our soaking items. Lo and behold, they are pretty much clean. I will use a toothbrush to remove the last remnants of residue from the suction bath mat, rinse it with the curtain. This way it's gonna be nice and mold free. I also take out the shower head from the vinegar bath and look at this, super easy and it gets the job done. I will use the same vinegar to do the second shower head in the master's bedroom. Now that the bath mat, the shower curtain, and the shower head are all clean, I will put my sleeve protectors to keep my clothes nice and dry. And I got them at the local dollar store. I absolutely love them. I find them cute and very useful. Today, to clean the bathroom, I will use my Dawn Power Wash because I did not have any more method cleaner. I used it all up to clean the dining room and the kitchen. I don't know about you, but I absolutely love letting my products sit for a bit before I start cleaning dirty surfaces. I feel somehow it loosens up the grime, but maybe it is just me, or maybe you do it too. Once everything has been sitting for a few minutes, I start cleaning. And because I do not want to cross-contaminate my food tools with my toilet tools, I color code them. Green will be used for bathrooms and other messy cleanups, but will never be used on food surfaces. This way my red and blue microfiber cloth and sponges will be only used with food surfaces. With the sink, I take my time to clean the stopper as it is so gunky right now, but thank God, after using a bit of elbow grease, it looks much better. But mamma mia, the stopper really needed this good clean. Look at this gunk. I quickly cleaned the bath, then I moved to the toilet bowl, which is my most dreaded task of the day. Because I'm squeamish when I clean the toilet bowl, I will put on top of my butler sleeves a pair of matching rubber gloves. I know it's a bit extra, but I will use anything to make the task a bit fun and protect me from toilet water. Once I have my makeshift PPS on and because I want to do a good job, I will remove the toilet seat by removing the cover and then sliding off the toilet seat. I spray again everything with power wash and then I will wipe everything down with paper towel because I simply cannot get myself to use a reusable microfiber cloth to clean the toilet bowl. And yes, I am sorry not to be more eco-friendly, but this is something I have not been able to change yet. 
With a new paper towel, I clean the toilet seat thoroughly. I place it back and I finish off with cleaning the floors, the mirror, and with that, this bathroom is done. I repeat the same thing in our small ensuite bathroom. And on a side note, I have to show you this amazing toothpaste dispenser station with four integrated cups as well as five toothbrush holders. This dispenser has been a game changer for this small bathroom as it keeps the little sink space that we have free and the children absolutely love it. I found it on Amazon and I will leave the link in the description box below. While I was finishing the last bathroom, our very camera shy son mopped all the floors. And with everybody's help, as a family, we finally have a clean house to start our week. I'm curious to know, what is a non-negotiable when you do your own Sunday reset routine? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for being here. It means the world to me. And know that in my book, you are my essential, my non-negotiable in my Sunday reset routine. And the time I spend with you on Sunday fuels my week and motivates me to go the extra mile. If you're here until the end, please write in the comments. I love Sunday reset routines, so I know I was not alone. And as a gentle reminder, if nobody told you today, know that you are loved and you are enough just the way you are. Until next time, stay safe, stay blessed, and don't forget to from it up. If I say that I love you.